I wanna make this water change process very, very easy to do. I don't have the room to fit my arms in underneath the last row of tanks. When I do water changes on these 20 tanks, I just have to drain out water from two tanks. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the plans that I've drawn up for a brand new water change system that I intend to put on this rack. If you've been on my channel for a while now, you would know that it takes me approximately three hours per week to change all the water in this fish room, and I've got 32 aquariums in here. That's still pretty quick to do all those water changes. However, I wanna make it even quicker, and I've got some ideas now that I wanna share with you guys on how I am going to do all the water changes on this rack via one pipe to drain and to fill. Now, if you've been on my channel again for a while, you'd know this rack is a sump system. On this side of the fish room, all the aquariums are connected to a central sump. So when I do water changes on these 20 tanks, I just have to drain out water from two tanks, or even one if I really wanted to be lazy, and then fill those two tanks back up, and then all the aquariums on this side of the room will get that water, they'd get that fresh water through the plumbing. However, on this rack, when I want to change the water on these aquariums, because they're not drilled, because they're not connected, I need to siphon out water out of each and every single tank and fill up each and every single tank individually. But the new plans I have drawn up, I can do that via one hose to drain and that same hose to fill. So I'm gonna show you all that in this week's video. So here's the first design I came up with for the water change system. It's a very, very simple design and it just made sense to me to run with this design when I came up with it. So I'll quickly run you through how it works. Each tank has a drain line going to about this point in the aquarium about 20 to 25 centimeters deep. Uh, it was gonna have filter sponge on it uh, or fly screen to stop fish from getting sucked up, obviously. Go to an elbow out the top of the aquarium, connect to another elbow, then a drain line all the way down to this tap. So that design is repeated on every single tank. Now, the only difference is at the end, of the far left tank, there was gonna be an elbow that connects the common drain line to the other three tanks and then a drain line to the garden. So when I came up with this design, I was considering running three independent garden hoses to each row. So this row would run off one garden hose, this row would run off another garden hose, and this row would run off a third garden hose. And I was thinking to myself, that would be quick to drain them, that would drain fairly fast. Uh, if I was to connect all these to one garden hose, obviously the draining the draining is gonna take a lot longer because you've got 12 tanks going to, through one garden hose. So I thought, yeah, I'll just run three separate garden hoses and I'll do my water changes like that. Then it occurred to me that that defeats the point of having this system up and running. I only really wanna use one hose all up to drain and fill these tanks up. That was one con with this design. The other issue I had with the design is all my tanks are very close together on this rack. They're pushed up right against the wall and they're really close together. So how was I gonna access each tap? But yes, I could put the tap lower underneath each aquarium, but then I'd have to get in underneath the aquarium, turn each tap on or off. That was, I felt that was gonna be a pretty uncomfortable experience and I wanna make this water change process very, very easy to do. I don't want it to be a bit of a labor intensive thing, even though it's as easy as turning a tap on or off. Uh, the mere fact of having to reach in between each row of tanks, uh, didn't, I didn't find it uh, that appealing. The other issue I had was, uh, again, access to the plumbing. Some of the plumbing will be behind the tanks uh, to get to these taps, and I didn't wanna have that. I wanna see if there's, if there's a leak, I wanna have easy access to that leak so I can just change out some of that plumbing. So that didn't appeal to me either. And lastly, my biggest issue with this design is how was I gonna access all the plumbing on the bottom row of tanks? That bottom row of tanks is very low to the fish room floor and having this design with uh, the taps in the middle of each tank is just not possible. I, I don't have the room to fit my arms in underneath the last row of tanks, that bottom row of tanks, to access the, the taps. How would I even fit them? Uh, I wouldn't be able to even set up all the irrigation hoses uh, in, in that position on the last row of tanks. So I was, I was thinking about this design. Yeah, it's a very simple design. And then I thought, it's, it's just not physically possible with the way my stands are. 
Now, in your fish room, if you're gonna do something like this, uh, I suggest you do have the tanks spread out a little bit apart, and then you can possibly set something up like this if your tanks aren't drilled. Uh, you don't have to have the tanks so close together because my room is quite small. I need them closer together so I can fit more tanks in the small space and right up against the wall. Uh, on my first rack that I designed, I have the rack off the back of the wall by about one and a half feet so I can access all the plumbing to do maintenance on it as I need. Uh, but with this design, because I didn't really intend on having it all drilled and plumbed up, I've pushed the stand right up against the back wall and I have no way of uh, putting plumbing at the back of the tanks now unless I empty them, of course, and then separate them that way. But I really don't wanna to have to do that because I've got fish in them already. So this design ultimately, I didn't think it was gonna work for me. Uh, and again, running the three independent hoses, I wasn't sure about that at this stage of the design. So I came up with a different design. And this is it here. Now, the design of getting water out of the tanks and going to a tap is if, if essentially the same. It's just the position of where those taps are in the system has changed. So you'll see that uh, for the end tank, for instance, we've got the same design. You've got a drain that goes up to two elbows and then down to a tap. And um, that's where an elbow would normally be to go to the common drain line to connect the rest of the tanks, like on the previous system. However, what I've done with this design is the taps are both on either sides of the stand. So I have easy access to all the plumbing with this design. The only hose that I won't have easy access to is the last hose that goes underneath the last row of tanks, the bottom row of tanks, but I'll have access to all the fittings on the sides of the stands. Now this might look like a complicated idea, uh, and it was conceptually for me when I first came up with it, uh, I was struggling to work out how I was gonna do it all and connect them all up. But uh, this design allows me easy access to all the plumbing, all the fittings. If there's a leak, I can easily change any of the fittings out. It allows me access to all the taps uh, and easy access to the taps. I can start both tanks on one side of the stand and, and start the siphon on the other two tanks on the other side of the stand at the same time. So I just have to turn two there, two there, and we're done, the water's draining out. And when I initially did this design up, still required three garden hoses as well, uh, but I've since changed that design to be one hose and it's no longer a garden hose. But I'll get to that in a moment. So ultimately, we've got access to all the pieces of irrigation uh, pipe, all the elbows, all the T-pieces, all the taps, I have easy access to them. I don't have to fit my head and body in between each row to access the taps to open and close them. They're all easily accessible from both ends of the stand. And that's why I decided to run with this design of the plumbing. So the last thing I had to decide on was whether I was gonna run with three independent garden hoses to drain and fill each tank. And I was starting not to like that idea the more I thought about it because again, Everything takes time to do. I need to connect all those garden hoses up. I need to disconnect them. And something as simple as doing that every week didn't appeal to me. I just want to connect the one hose. The other issue I had with the garden hose idea was, yes, it's easy to buy a garden hose, but the widest diameter garden hose I could easily buy was 19 millimeters. And all the fittings, all the irrigation hose that I have here is 25 mil. So 25 mil fittings going into a drain line that's only 19 mil wide, is a, it, it makes the fittings that I bought, the 25 mil fittings, redundant. It makes the 25 mil irrigation piping that I bought redundant because then I've got a choke point at my 19 mil carton hose because it's not large enough. So I was thinking, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna fix this issue where I don't have a choke point in any of my plumbing? And then I remembered a couple of years back, I bought a sump pump and with that sump pump came a 25 meter long hose that was 34 mil wide. It's a gray water hose. And I tried to work out how I was gonna incorporate this gray water hose into this system. And then I realized that I could connect all these rows up and I'm gonna show you how I connect them up because that isn't displayed on, on this image. I worked out how to connect each row up together and then eventually into this gray water hose with a quick connect. Now I'm really sorry guys, but I have to split this video up into two parts. 
in my video editing software, I'm almost up to 25 minutes for the whole video and I really got to condense it down because there's just so much detail in there, but I don't want to bore you with that detail. So I'm trying to make these easy to consume videos, easy to understand. And I hope you guys understand why I've split it into two parts. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.